Welcome back. Our next guest represents a group that is recognized as Kenya's cultural ambassadors. They represented Kenya at the 2008 Olympics Dignitaries Forum recently, and you'll mainly see them performing during national celebrations or even at your wedding. I am joined by none other than Juma Odemba, the manager of Kayamba Africa. Welcome, Juma. Thank you, Jackie. Karibu. Asante. So, where have you been, man? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Tell us a bit about yourself, your family. Um, I'm the seventh born of a family of ten. Uh, we have uh, five girls and, and five boys. And uh, out of that big family, only two of us are keenly interested in music. The rest okay. enjoy listening to yeah. that. Um, I also have a daughter who is 12 years old. And, uh, Just about to the teenage years. Oh yes, that uh, makes me frightened about next year. <laughs> She's going to be a teenager next year. Uh, I'm a single dad. Okay. Uh, and uh, I guess my family is is just a typical typical Kenyan family. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you grow up? I grew up amazingly in South Sea. Mm. Oh, in yes. Nairobi. Yes, in Nairobi. Uh, we lived in South Sea. I started going to school in South Sea. I used to go to a school called Kongoni Primary School, mm -hmm. uh, which was predominantly, by the way, taught by uh, Kenyans of Asian or Indian uh, origin. And that's where perhaps I started learning a lot about music. Really? My first exposure was to Indian music. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's bizarre. Yeah, well, uh, music was part of the learning. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, there's a yeah. way the teachers used to motivate us. Yeah. So how did you start Kayamba? About 10 years ago, we had gone to a wedding that took quite a bit of time to start. So while we were waiting, we decided with a couple of my friends to go and sing a few songs to the, to the guests who were waiting mm. for the wedding to start. And out of that, we were all male uh, at first. Out of that, we said, why don't we try something like this? Let's try and sing in a group. And within a day or two, we decided, okay, uh, let's form a group. We were six of us, uh, six of us uh, from different uh, communities, different areas of, of Nairobi. And uh, immediately we did start the group. We started laying down strategies on how to move forward. Mm. How know. did you get the resources to, to come together? Uh, at first it was very difficult. In fact, uh, I understand the, the plight of many Kenyan musicians is that when the beginning, the beginning of any group, is a very trying moment. Mm. Uh, what we did is we used our own resources, which, by the way, are well limited. Uh, but I guess what drove us is the love of the fact that we did do it first because of the love of the music. Mm. And consequently, we started exposing the music to some of our friends, and some of our friends later spoke about us, and we actually started getting invitations to perform in different functions. Yeah, now you said earlier on that um, your group comprises of people from all over Nairobi and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, how, is this what inspired you to do the multilingual um, yeah. theme or decision to take music into that way? What, what inspired that whole sort of multilingual? Uh, what we did first is to look at what was available. And by then there were very serious Kenyan R&B singers. We had serious rappers who had just started uh, recording. And they were huge, such that when we tried to look at the best music we can do, we couldn't go into something that is already existing. So we, you had to be unique. It within. had to be unique. We had to pick on something that would probably identify us. We didn't realize it then, but we had a storage, and we still do, of hundreds of songs from our traditional uh, community. Mm. Better still, we learned from each other's community. We learned the pronunciation from each other, and very soon we were all very fluent in singing in different languages. Then we also looked at the negative effects of having a group that only identifies with one community. We said, let's not go that direction. Let's have a group that represents the entire country. And out of that, it fell into place that we had different communities in the group, and we also decided to do just different songs from different languages. Okay, w where you're coming from there, I mean, earlier on, obviously this year we had a lot of problems with the different um, communities, tribes, and there was, you know, people being torn apart. Yes. As a musician, did that not make you feel that you were a group who were able to, sp to go right through those codes, right through those tribal um, problems? 
and 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 being able to sing about it. I mean, we how, how did how did you feel about all that? In in the beginning, the the of course naturally there was a lot of confusion even within the group, but uh, part of the thing we did is to talk about it, and we agreed that look we have been together for this long, yet we've all come from different communities. Better still, we were able to continue performing as one team. Uh, so within us, we realized that uh, now that we are an example of how communities can live together, mm. we decided to go out. We decided to take it on and sing in charity events. We sang in, in peace uh, rallies. We sang in any opportunity that allowed us to show that if we can t live together and we are in, we in one and we sing together, uh, the rest should be easy. Because in art, we are more temperamental, yet we can cope with each other. Exactly. So the rest of the community should enjoy, and it has worked. And we did a particular uh, thing for, 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 for our performances. When we went to a Kikuyu wedding, for example, we told them, let's appreciate the Luo culture. Let's appreciate the uh, Kalenjin music. And it was amazing that people would actually take that as the challenge. And dance and perform and, 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 and join us in singing songs that are not from their mm. communities. And out of these uh, several forums that we did, people walked out feeling much better and much lightened by the heavy mm. load that they were yeah, carrying. Yeah, yeah, so it's sort of like a healing. It was, it was. But you've got quite a lot of presence with, within yourself. Um, what else do you do? Uh, or well. is it all about the music? <laughs> it's, it's not all about the music. Uh, I was a teacher for well over 13 years. And out of my teaching experience, I also am a broadcaster. I work for a radio station where I produce African music programs. Mm. And uh, apart from that, really, when you put 90% of it all, it is music. And uh, music is every day for me. Yeah, it's a poetry yeah. of life, isn't it, oh, really? Yes. It's the lyric yeah. of life. Mm. Um, what have you learned from your experiences in the various lives that you've lived? Uh, personally, I've realized that we are like a stone that needs an artist to sculpture. At first, it comes out just like a bare rock. But soon, as soon as the artist starts chipping into it, with time, the real person comes out. The real art comes out. And we believe that that artist who is working on our characters, on our experiences, is working throughout until mm. perhaps the day we die. Mm. Such that for every experience I've had, I've used it to improve myself in terms of uh, self-righteousness and also to learn to also understand and tolerate other things that happen around me. And, and this is why I say it's like an art to me because uh, every time there's something that is being chipped and then we need that, there's something that comes out. Mm. Yeah. And how did the Olympics, how did that all come about? I mean, that's massive. That's huge. Yeah, Jackie, that was very huge. I want to confess that it was one of the yeah. most difficult and most challenging uh, performances. But, uh, but really sort of like, a, wow, you've made oh, yes. you, like your <laughs> personal self, your, your yeah. group, your people, you yeah. know, you're just like, wow, the Olympics. I mean, this is a worldwide symbolic. Oh. Uh, event it was it was fr first when we heard that we were due to perform uh, during this period we of course didn't believe it but as soon as we started going for the orientation for the lessons in chinese for the way oh, what? lessons in chinese yes we did uh, do a little bit of chinese so I so can, how do you say hello uh ni hao okay and ni hao. You, and you say xie xie, and when you want to say goodbye is ai jian and when you want to show people of China that you are enjoying yourself, you're happy to be in China, you say, Wow, that's something. Whoa, yes. that's amazing. Did you have to learn this, the, the, the writings? No. Well? Fortunately, being a teacher and the person <laughs> who was teaching us, we did try and use the phonetic language. And this was especially so because we had to learn a Chinese song also. And we had to sing it in Chinese. Now, these are the challenges that we were given. We didn't know the impact of this particular performance until we got to China. We were put on rehearsals of about 12 hours for three days. 12 nonstop. hours? Yes. So the Chinese live by their, their culture? They I work mean, very hard. They work hard. And, 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 and at first it was a cultural shock for me. Right. Because I'm like, oh, I know what I'm doing. But because they wanted to perfect what we were doing, we did rehearsals seriously for three days. And uh, on the fourth day is when we had the major performance which was broadcast live on, yeah. on, on CCTV and it was worldwide. And out was of the amazing, seven yeah. countries mm. from Africa that mm. were there, 
uh, the intense uh, publicity and intense scrutiny was on, on Kayamba Africa because of, uh, we came from Kenya. And, and our did, runners yeah, and all and that we, whole and, thing. You know, everything about Kenya seemed to intrigue the, 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 the people, such that when we finalized it by singing a song in Chinese, which is called uh, My Chinese Heart, the audience couldn't understand. And uh, they were overwhelmed. And the next day we were all over the press and all over the, 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 the radio stations and TV stations that there's a Kenyan group that has come here and sang in Chinese and the song was very meaningful to them, by the way. This was all happening in a hall called the Great People's Hall, which is a humongous place. Uh, it's, I've never done something like that, and I don't see myself doing that very mm. soon. I think that's a pinnacle of any artist. You did this rehearsal in Chinese for, um, the, night for the Olympics. Yes. And how did it go? I mean, very well. Okay, I mean, how... how over the song itself. Yeah. The song is called uh, My Heart is in China. Wo de chong Chin. chin. Yeah. And it goes somewhere in the, in the song. The chorus goes, Chang 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 Chong, Huang Shang Huang Ho, Tao Ching Song Hong Kwai Ching, Wu Long He Shi, Wu Long He Di, Sing Song Ying Yai Ching. Okay, on that note, you know this program is all about heritage. We're going to visit the National Archives. We'll be back in a moment. Hello, my name is Flora Musa. I work for the Kenya National Archives. I'll take you for a garden tour around the archives. The Kenya National Archives building was built in 1931, which was originally the headquarters of National Bank of India. On this section, we have culture and ways of life during those own time, how people used to live in those old time. For example, most of the pictures over here, like the typical Kikuyu homestead, Means of transport during those own time. Old men celebrating. And a non married woman wearing a surutia, the round necklace. This is a section where we have the Mau Mau fighters. Uh, basically, we have a pass that every Mau Mau people, when uh, they surrender, they have to carry to get uh, fair treatment. Like this one over here, it's a sample of the pass, which uh, bears the name of the of the person is given a fair treatment, food, medical attention if required, is detained but is not to be prosecuted of any offense connected to the emergency, which he may have committed prior to 18th January lamp used by the Comoros Island people, like a lamp, they pour out inside and put a ribbon hanging from outside, and it can light just like a lamp. And here we have a motor and pair of a breeding maze from the Giriyama people in Kenya. Inside the house we have a display called Zidaka, a display done by Swahili women in the house show their household. They imported them from China and India, that's melamine caps. And this is kangar, a clothing worn by the Swahili women. And this over here, it's kikoi, a clothing worn by the Swahili men. And this is a chest given to a newly married woman to start a new life with. This is a rhino horn earring, which is supposed to be worn only by the older women. And this is a gold one, which is supposed to be worn by the younger women, like this. And these are silver jewelries, used mostly in wedding time. History cannot be told in one day. Visit us at the Kenya National Archives and get to learn more about our Kenyan African history.
So you guys at home, make sure you make a trip to the National Archives. It's part of your heritage as this program. And back to Juma. It's nice to see you again. My mm -hmm. goodness gracious, how on earth did you learn to do that? <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> Hard work and practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, yes, practice. Yes. But wow, what a voice. I mean, that, I mean, you even sound Chinese. I mean, even your expression. <laughs> I mean, it's also yeah. you've got the sort of Mao suit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. incredible. Mm. Has Kayamba Africa won any music awards? Yes, we have. Uh, one of the most interesting things about awards is, first of all, to get through and be nominated is really something. It's huge. So uh, we were nominated for Cora in 2003. Okay. We won the Kisima Award for the best uh, central uh, group. Mm -hmm. We have won various other uh, uh, awards that have been organized locally. And uh, one of our biggest achievements also is the fact that uh, our music keeps evolving, such that the, the sales and the, the, the response of this music, even on YouTube, is, is so, so intense. These are the things that matter to us. So um, this year you've done the Olympics. Are you setting yourself up for some more awards? Well, yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, early this year we did go back to Oman uh, in Muscat, where we did the African Day, which is a huge event in, 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 in the Middle East country there. And as soon as we came back, we did go to the Olympics. We are having plans to go to South Africa soon. Mm -hmm. uh, if they do succeed, it will be again a case where we are representing Kenya, the country, uh, not Kayamba as, as a group. And uh, we also hope to do early next year, we hope to do Germany. Okay, good. Yes. So what's it like as a celebrity and a cultural ambassador, you know, the good times, the bad times that come with it? Um, usually we try to concentrate on the positive sides. Uh, we have been very lucky to have been received very well by Kenyans. And that by itself is a blessing, such that anybody who goes out there will speak well of Kayamba Africa. The bad side is we usually have the notion that uh, in Kenya, people tend to sometimes disrespect people's intellectual rights. So we have had the issue of uh, piracy mm. affecting us. It's a big quite, problem quite, here. Quite it's, a huge, it's a huge problem. And, and we have tried uh, working with the government. The government is trying to, to, to solve mm. it. But I think the actual implementation of this, has, it's been wanting. And uh, at the end of the day, the Kenyan artist will always suffer because of this. Now, this is where it discourages you to, from continuing. But despite all this, we always look at the positive side. And we will continue to mm. work hard. Thank you very much for being on the mid-morning show, Juma. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. We will be viewing Kayamba Africa's new video shortly. We'll be right back. <laughs> You're watching me.